Hello everyone, it's Julie from Camellia Craft Designs. I'm here today with a few different ways that you can use your laminator. If you have a laminator, if you don't, you might want one after you've seen these. A couple of these ways could save you some money and make your life a little bit easier. Some of them are just faffage <laughs> to make things look pretty. Uh, yeah, this is part of the Ray Trimbella tick tricks tips tricks and hacks collaboration yeah i nearly forgot to say that so right let's start with a nice easy straightforward one i'll just move these other bits to one side for now now here we all know we can laminate card don't we and i just thought i'd show you the difference between laminating it with the gloss lamination paper and laminating it with matte i love the matte i really do and also, as you can see, this is double-sided. I've used two halves of the same piece of paper to show you the difference. Now, one other thing you can do, if you've laminated two pieces of paper inside, you can cut your edges off. Do you do? I nearly started coming. I dream of genie theme. Hmm. <laughs> one of my subscribers mentioned it mentioned something I'd done recently looked like the uh, bottle from I Dream of Genie and I've been humming it ever since. I already have a problem humming that. Now I'm just cutting just, I'll show you how much I've cut off, just a smidgen of the paper all the way around on all four sides. Well it's card not paper. Well you actually know it's a thick paper thin card so I can't decide where it is can I. So now I've cut all them off. Ta-da! It's two sheets. I love that. I mean, I were, I were quite amazed the first time I saw that. So I hope people are suitably amazed. So we've now got a sheet of card that looks like it did before it was laminated. But on that side, it is now waterproof. Well, I won't go putting water on it when the back side's not covered. But yeah, it's going to be more durable. You could fold that over to make a card, make a little mini album. Do anything you want with that that will cut apart the same because i did do that on both sides but i might keep that as is so that's that right stamping is another thing you can do on acid on laminating laminating sheets i can't speak why am i doing a video now that i like that yeah now this was an idea i saw this by jennifer mcguire years ago yeah People use this a lot when making cards and mini albums. Uh, I've not seen many people do it in the junk journal world as of yet. And I thought I could do it like this and then we could use it as a page in a junk journal. A nice little wipe clean page. Or you could even put some papers inside. Let me grab some. And turn it into a cute little mini album. Uh, junk journal even. <laughs> I've got, I've, I mentioned many albums now, I'm stuck on them. I'm just altering that because I don't know whether them leaves are going to show up. They're not going to show up on anything, are they? But the other good thing about this is, because laminate, laminating sheets, I can't say it, are slightly bigger than, in the UK, slightly bigger than A4, which is our paper size in Europe. And in US, you have letter size paper. So I'm assuming your laminator sheets are just slightly bigger than letter size. So yeah, you've got that. I mean, you could put staples in that, bind it in any way you want, and you've got a notebook straight away. It'd be an ideal little recipe book to keep out on your counter in the kitchen, because if you spilt anything on the front, you could just wipe it clean. Yeah, this is not very clean. Another top tip, do not put hand cream on within six hours of filming a video with laminator sheets. It'll get covered in hand prints. I'm ever so sorry. <laughs> So that's that one. Right, I'm going to do a bit of stamping now and show you how to do it. Right, I think I'm just going to stamp on half a laminator sheet because you really don't want to sit here and watch me stamp a whole laminator sheet. Or you might do, but it might get dark before I've finished. So let me get one out. I'm going to cut it in half. I can use... Mm -hmm. Now don't worry that those two sides won't be glued together because when I put my things through the laminator I just pop it inside a piece of paper if I'm worried it might come apart. So I'm going to use the glued together one today though, I am. I don't know if that's quite half a sheet but you get the idea don't you? Right, I did discover while uh, I've been a mess because although... 
I have done this. I'd only ever done it with the white ink that I'd seen it done with, which worked perfectly. So I tried some of the colours and I weren't too impressed. Now, the best ink apparently is pigment ink. I always listen to Jennifer Maguire. She knows her onions. I tried that purple. Oh, I had a couple of goes with purple. Oh, it's first one. The first one were terrible. Absolutely terrible. I had three goes all together with purple. That was my first go. Look at that. I didn't like any. I didn't let it dry at all. I just wanged it straight through my laminator and it went smeary. Now, if you're doing some abstract design and you want that, brilliant, go for it. Then I did that. I let it dry a good hour and it still did that. So I'm not too happy with that. Let me move these. I don't want to put them anywhere where they're going to be glaring you. Now this time. I put my ink on my stamp and then I stamped it off first on a bit of paper and then went to that. And I let it dry. To be honest, I let it dry about 10 minutes and I still got this. I would use that in a junk journal, but if that were a greeting card, I wouldn't put it on. We just want perfection, don't we, on greeting cards? So that was the purple. I had a similar experience with some... What colour is that even? Copper. I mean, yeah... It's smeared. I, no, I didn't like that. I then, for some reason, decided to put a sticker in. And I loved it. Yeah, put your stickers in. You can see, like, a little line around it. But, yeah, that looks good. I'd use that. But I'm not going to bring these stickers in today. That was just some mad thing I did. Right, I then tried black. Not too bad, the black. Again, I didn't let the... If I'd let that dry longer, it props would have been better. But I'd still use that in a junk journal. So maybe that's why everyone I've ever watched do this technique is use white ink. I don't know, is there something about the formulation of white ink that works better? But I'm quite happy with white ink. So this is a pigment ink. Jennifer says pigment ink and I listen to Jennifer. So this brand is Versacraft. It's, it's tuxedo. I can't say it. I just can't say it. That's it. I can't say it. I'm not going to try. I'll, I'll butcher the word. So I've got my half a laminator sheet. This is a gloss one. And I'm going to open it up. Open it up. You can. There we go. And I've got my stamp ready that I want to use. If I haven't lost it. I can hear it sticking to some of it. So it's here. Here we go. I'm using one from this Creative Expression set. I got this quite a while ago in Happy Mail. And I'm just going to put one stamp on. You don't want to see me stamp a whole A4 sheet, do you? Well, you might do, but it'll be dark before I'd finish, so I'm not going to. Right. Make sure we're in shot, in shot. There we go. So I'm going to ink it up. I'm doing it properly. I'm putting the ink to the stamp. Half the time, I just wang my stamp in my ink. This is apparently the proper way. If you're doing a big image, it, it is better. You can get your ink more even. Right. Now I'm going to stamp that on. I'm going to turn this sideways to do it because I just I find it easier to hold my stamp like that. I want it on that side. Then I can fold this over as either a card or a little mini journal front. So there we go. I've got my piece of funky foam that I stamp onto. I just find stamping turns out better. When you've got a little bit of give underneath. It's the first time I've used this stamp as well, so I hope it turns out okay. Otherwise, we'll be going to leaves. Oh, yeah, I knew it would. Creative expressions are very good stamps. So, if you can see that. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let that dry for as long as it takes me to show you the other things I've done with laminator sheet. And then we'll come back and run that through at the end, yeah? So I'm gonna pop it up on this shelf out at way. And then I'm gonna try not to put all else on it and forget it's there. Hmm. If, if I'd have been really organized, I'd have stamped one earlier, wouldn't I? I'd have been like, oh, Blue Peter, and here's one I stamped earlier. So I'm just gonna put my laminator on now because I'm going to use it in a minute. Right. Do you know, I can't remember if I've told you. I've trekked myself to a new one, yeah, from Amazon. My old one's all grungy. This might be an echo now. I can't remember if I've said it. I did, to be honest, start filming the video once, and I totally forgot to say that it were part of Rachel Bella's collaboration. Because I'm an umpty like that. 
And because I don't do fancy editing, if it goes wrong, I have to start again. So if it's got to go horribly wrong before I'll start again, I normally just leave stuff in. Right. The next thing is napkins. You may have seen napkins laminated, you may not have. You can do it with tissue paper, you can do it with rice paper, you can even laminate fabric. I just didn't have any to hand and I can't think at the moment what I would use laminated fabric for, but you get this same effect. Now that's what happens if you just laminate one side of the napkin, you know, like I did with that card. I showed me cut it up. That's what happens if you laminate both sides. So it looks like a thick vellum. I love it. It's still see-through. Look, you can see the poppies through. Now I've laminated the same napkin there, one side and double-sided. Yeah, so let's give that a whirl. Right, because I couldn't get hold of any reasonably priced matte laminator sheets in a4 i just went for a5 so and I'll, I'll just make the best of it then i got my napkins out and to be honest most of my napkins are the type where you get four different when you open the napkin up all you've got is let me show you is that half a napkin half a napkin yeah it's just the same image four times so perhaps i'm wasting less laminator sheet using these a5 ones if I were doing a full sheet of A4 rice paper or something though, yeah, I would obviously go for the A4 when I get some reasonable priced. I live in Yorkshire, you know, I'm not paying that much for my laminator sheets. How much? I think the cheapest I could find this week. It was something like £13 for 25 sheets. I'm like, I don't think so. That desk it, these were very reasonable. I've had these a while, these A5 ones. They're A4 ones without a stock without a stock. So get them back in stock, desk it, because you do fab laminated pouches. Yeah, I'm just going to call them sheet. I'll call them all sorts. Right, so I've got this bit of napkin. Yay, that's ready. Right, what I'm gonna do something now that can you see how I've got half a napkin folded in half? I'm gonna put Let's take, I'm not going to take, I don't know whether this is a two or a three ply napkin, i.e. I don't know whether it's two layers or three layers. I've took one layer off and I'm happy with that. If there's another layer, it will come off after I've laminated it, I assure you, because I did it like that earlier. So I'm going to grab my laminator sheet and I'm going to pop my napkin inside. I'm trying to open it wrong end. Move them stamps because you ain't using them at minute, are you, missus? No, you're not. So, yeah, I thought I could just make a video laminating card, but I think we've all seen card laminated. Right, so if you look both sides, I've got napkin. So my laminator is heated up. I've got quite thin laminator sheets. Ooh, I think the 80 micron these, yeah. You can get them much thicker. It depends on what you're doing, doesn't it? As a junk journaler, I try and keep things the profile quite slim so that you can fit more stuff in a journal. Right, can you see it coming out the other end now? Whee! So yeah, the matte ones, when you see just the lamination sheet itself, it is quite opaque. And if it comes out wrinkly or crinkly dinkly or it doesn't look good, just bang, bung it through again. Sometimes they just do wrinkle. How's that one done? I don't know what's happened there. That's probably my that's my hand cream where I've touched it. Don't put hand cream on when you're laminating, silly woman. I don't know why I put it through again though, because I'm going to cut that off. So that this is just pointless. This is just a pointless exercise, me running it through the laminator again. It's nice and warm though. It's fabulous for warming your hands. Oh yeah. So in cost of living crisis, it can double up as a heater. That's if you can afford electricity, switch it on. Don't even go there, electricity price in UK. My friend Cheryl can, has got a house four times the size of mine and can run 
heating or air conditioning all the time and still pay half of what we pay in the UK. Moan done for today. <laughs> Moan over. Whee. I think they're trying to freeze us into being energy efficient. Right, I, I shouldn't moan anyway, I'm very lucky in that I've got a very energy efficient house. Right, I'm now going to cut, do you know like we did when I cut that piece of card? I'm just going to cut to the edge of the napkin. Let me try the actual factory edge first, because we know that's straight. And then, when I've cut that, I then use that as my guide for the other edges. So, there we go. Then you put that at the top or bottom, whichever way you're comfy chopping. And then that one. And then that one. Right, there we go. Now that's not looking very see-through at the minute. Two reasons for that. <laughs> We've got two napkins. Look at that magic. And I'd own, own, look, it looks wrinkly on the back. That's because I only took one of the layers off. But it's only the layer with the picture on that has stuck to the laminated sheet. I find it a nightmare to get this layer off sometimes. But it's so much easier once it's been laminated. I'm just going to turn that off two ticks. Just been moaning about cost of electricity and laminators going. It's just yeah, just keep it going. Right. Go on, you can do it. You've got a little bit of nail woman. You need trimming. And then you can use that for tissue paper or mopping up paper. Or you can even blow your nose with it if you should like. Right. So now we've got two of those. I love that. That is just so pretty. Yeah. Oh, you can use them as pockets. You can fold them. You can do anything out of them. Yeah. You could put back it onto a tag and make on some card and make a tag. I really love that. I really love that matte finish. Right. Now, here's the one. I've just been dying to get to this one. Because I came up with something I thought might be new. You, you very rarely will see me say, oh, I've come up with something new. Because I am of the opinion that there's not much new under the sun. If you've come up with it, chances are someone else has come up with it as well. Now, I have seen these done. And these are pockets to keep your stamps in. So there we go. Now, oh yeah, this is the. I should have showed you this one first. That's just a pocket. I left big edges on. I don't know why. I just didn't trim them down. Life's too short, isn't it? And I've done my pocket slightly shorter than the top of my stamp. These are the Tim Holtz ones, so that I can get it in and out easier. And these will now be ideal for storing upright in in a box, so I can just flick through them and pick the stamp I want. Also, if you wanted to store them in a binder, I've made this one with enough room on the edge to punch two holes in, and that will then clip easily into a binder. And because you're putting the holes in, you can use any binder, regardless of how far apart the holes are, can't you? I use my quarter inch Fiskars little punch for that. It went through pretty easy. I'm quite happy with it. Right, I'll show you how to make these and then I will show you something else I did with those to what I think is improve it. Right, grab some laminator sheets. So that's all done with laminator sheets. So if you've got no sewing machine, you don't want to sew to make. Because I did see I saw someone recently make these with, um, yeah, plastic wallets. And, yeah, I thought, that's a brilliant idea. I'm going to dust them, and then I couldn't be bothered. Because <laughs> it was too much work. Too much work. I can be a bit lazy. So, get your big chopper out, woman, because you're going to need it. 
Right, I'll use this same stamp set here. Can you see I've got far more laminated sheets out than I need every time? So far, I've not put anything on top of that one that I stamped earlier. So that's still looking good. Right, it happens to be a Tim Holtz sheet because they're the ones I need to make pockets for. So grab your ruler and measure your stamps. I know the Tim Holt stamp set is seven inches wide. So I made my pockets seven and a half inches wide. Can you see it's just a bit wider? But then I made my pocket the same height as the stamp set so that it would just stick out the top a little bit. Yeah, so the acetate itself is the same height as the stamp set. I'm going to have to refresh my memory on what that height is. Come here, ruler. I've got rulers everywhere. I just pick them up, fling them down. Then when I want one, I can't find one because they've been flung somewhere. Here we go, I've got one. Well, I've moved my ruler tub further back and it's hard to reach. So it measures eight and a half inches high. So it's eight and a half by seven. So I've made my acetate eight high and I've then cut another piece of acetate seven and a half inches wide. So the gap inside is seven and a half inches wide. So grab one. It's not acetate, is it? It's a laminate sheet. So I'm going to use the side that doesn't have the factory seam on. So I'm going to cut this to seven and a half inches wide. So that'll work whether you've got A4 or whether you've got letter. This is really the only bit of measuring you need to do. Seven and a half inches wide. You can then go ahead and use that for something else. I'm going to switch the laminator on to warm up. I'll show you what we're going to do with this. So take those two that you've just cut peel them apart and you want to basically put them inside out because the two inside parts are very matte and they're sticky. The outside looks shiny before it's uh, is shiny because it's going to be shiny isn't it silly woman. So turn them inside out and lay them back together. I'll do a bit of shuffling here because those sticky sides don't uh, they don't slide against each other as well. So we've got sticky there, sticky there. The inside of that now, neither side is sticky and that's what makes our pocket. And then I'm going to pop this inside this. Whee. Go on, open it woman. You can do it. <laughs> I can't do it with my left hand. When will I learn I'm not left-handed? I was trying to do things with my left hand in my last video. It didn't work. Never does, never will. Now, if you want to be really frugal, you could cut some of that off now. I'm not going to be that frugal because I can then use the bit that I cut off after it's laminated for windows in things. I can. In fact, I'm going to place it down here. It could be easier than going it up to that end. We'll use the top end as a window. So I'm just leaving a gap of about three eighths of an inch. It's not quite a quarter down the side and along the bottom. Then I'm gonna put that back on. I hope you followed that. And then, oh, static, statics everywhere. I'm wearing a acrylic jumper, which doesn't help when you're messing with this kind of stuff. I'm gonna be getting electric shocks rest at night. So yeah, laminate with Julie. Shocking. I've put that in wonky. I hope it gets through before it runs out of laminator edge room. Can we see it, laminator? I tried to put my camera angle a bit uh, wider. Yeah, you can see it going through. You don't need to see the whole length of the thing, do you, I suppose? Right. There we go. It's coming through. Yeah, this bit... You can just, when you cut that off, you can use that as windows for specimen cards and such like. Yeah, it's going to crinkle my edge this. So I'm going to have to run this through again to uncrinkle my edge. I've got a crinkly bottom. Terrible that, isn't it, having a crinkly bottom? Whee! 
<laughs> we've got a wee in. So we've got to be a wee. Oh, I'm okay. oh, it's actually not too bad. That's looking good. Oh, not too wrinkly either. So I'm going to come ahead. I'm not turning the laminator off because I will need it again very soon. Oh, that's so warm. Now I'm going to get my chopper. <laughs> and I want to cut off. Can you see me inner sheets? I want to cut a little sliver of those inner sheets off. I'm sorry if you're getting blinded by the glare so just a sliver I'm cutting off if you aren't cutting off enough off you can come back again and have another go so then you should be able to open those yeah and then you've got a pocket and that does seal very well I don't think that's going to come apart in a hurry now if you want to put holes in pop your holes in that side and you've got your sheet ready to pop into your folder but then Here's where I come up with some of myself. Well, it's like I said, somebody might have done it before. And I thought, but what if you just want to keep your, keep them in a box and you don't want dust going in top and you want it to fasten? So then I came in and I did this. Yay! So that fastens with a Velcro dot. Or if you've got one of those machines that puts poppers in things, you could do that. So take stamps out and I'll show you. So what I did is I just attached another bit of lamination pouch to the back. Yeah, so I'll show you how I did that. Now before I go ahead and add that, I'm just going to trim this edge off. If you want a flap and rings, don't go trimming this off what I'm going to do now. So I've showed you how to do it with rings. I've showed you how to do it with the, not a flap with that, the edge. Yeah, with rings. <laughs> oh, Lordy. I've showed you that one with flaps. If you want a flap and rings, don't trim this off. I don't want uh, rings as well as a flap. I just want a flap. So about three eighths of an inch again. I've left that on. Now I'm going to round my corners, I've got my little corner rounder, it works perfectly on this. I've just used a small size, round it, that one's still rounded. And I'm going to do these at the top now, before I put my flap on. Because it's harder once your flap's on. Right, now to make the flap, you know that bit we cut off earlier? Yay! Bring it back. No, get your big trimmer, woman. Big trimmer. And cut that one too. A little bit under seven and a half inches. Yeah. Seven and a half is the width of our pocket, the in inside width. So it wants to be a little bit less. So I'll cut that off. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to open that up just a little bit. And I'm going to slide it onto just the back of that pocket. Just the back. Whee. Don't let me forget to finish that stamping before I sign off. <laughs> Don't want to be getting Scotty to beam me up before I finish the job. Right. So... If you're very, very picky about how straight it is, I'm just going to use lines on my board. Because the flap's not quite as wide as the edge, it's going to be straight enough, isn't it? Straight enough. That's all we have these days. Now, that looks good. Now, what you need is a sheet of A4 paper or something similar. Oh, what's that? Oh, <laughs> that was... that was. I thought this was plain paper. And one of them is a postage label that I printed out incorrectly on purple paper instead of a label like you do so a piece of paper as you can see i use misprints and i'm just going to fold that in half this is a bit like the old-fashioned laminators where you had to use a carrier sheet and i'm just going to pop that over there reason being i don't want that to go through laminate to get to that lip and make an awful mess Now, you could put it in the other way, but then I wouldn't want that to slide out. Do you, do you get me? 
There's, there's reasons for my madness. There's methods in my madness. Apparently people find it entertaining. <laughs> right. So I'm going to bring the laminator back. I hope you can still see. It's gone very dark. Just going to adjust my lighting. Yeah, I don't want to film this video with my lights on because I'll blind you. So, pop that through into your laminator. This is what I do when I use my laminator to dry and straighten wrinkly tea dyed paper. I just put a folded A4 sheet over at wobbly edge and feed it through. Straightens it out lovely. Better than iron in my opinion. Alright, so that's coming through. While that's coming through, I'm going to grab some Velcro dots. There we go. I mean, you, if you wanted to be fancy, you could put magnets on. You could put eyelets in and tie it. Do whatever works for you. When I'm grabbing a stamp, I want to be able to open that packet nice and quick. So I'm going for Velcro dots. I'm using the Posh Velcro brand here only because I couldn't find my cheaper ones. Because on these, I would definitely just use my cheaper ones. Do, 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 do. Bit of elevator music we need while that goes through, don't we? I don't know what do 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 in end is. I don't think that's an original version. I think that's uh, I must be jamming. <laughs> I can make jam. Don't know about uh, music. Right, that's very wrinkly. Isn't it? Very wrinkly. So I'm going to send it through one more time from bottom this time. Yeah. And that will straighten it all out. I said that earlier. If it's wrinkly, send it through again. It'll be fine. Now, while that's just going through, I'm going to have a look at my stamping. Ooh, that's... Yeah. The shine has gone off it. That has dried some. So that will be our next thing to do yeah i wish this went quicker i've got no patience me whatsoever i want everything now we complain about current generation wanting everything now and i'm just as bad i really am <sighs> yeah and if i were drying tea dyed paper now i'd just keep sticking another one in <laughs> yeah so they'd overlap i'd have about five thicknesses going through so yeah my old laminator has been a workhorse £10 it were from Asda and I got that when I used to be a driving instructor yeah and I gave that up when I was pregnant when I couldn't fit behind the steering wheel anymore basically right there we go that's much straighter if you want it even straighter send it through again but I think I might fall asleep and then there'll be no one to finish video so look now you've got a flap you've got a flap that you can fold over and turn into a flap yeah Wow, that's magic that. The flap becomes a flap. I've rounded that with medium one. Like I can see you can make these for any stamps you've got. You just need to you measure the width to get the width before you make the pocket and then you measure the height when you've yeah, put it together. So I'm putting that in and then I'm gonna fold that over. I want a little bit of clearance. I could measure it on other pocket. That looks about good to me. So I'm just gonna crease that. If you want that crease really definite, I don't, I want it to spring back. You can put it through laminator again and that crease will be more defined. So I'm gonna grab some of my Velcro dots. All right, I'm gonna put the fuzzy one up there. Fuzzy wuzzy. Oh. There we go. Got a bit wonky at first. Then I'm going to get the grabby one. <laughs> they probably have proper names, these. To me, it's fuzzy one and grabby one. And I put my grabby one onto my fuzzy one. And then I'm going to... There we go. That's straight enough. So I've got another pocket with a flap. So now I've got two pockets for flaps. So yeah, like I said... The pockets you buy for these, the, the, the price is horrendous. Laminator sheets are usually a lot cheaper, especially the gloss ones. I mean, 
had I been to Poundland, I would have picked some more of these up in Poundland. Uh, I don't know how many you get now for a pound, but they're still pretty inexpensive. B&M do them if you're in the UK. I'm sure you've got plenty of places over in the US where you can get lamination pouches quite cheaply. But yeah, I really like that. So that's what all my Tim Holtz stamps are going to be going in now. I can see what's in them. Yeah. Right. Back to the stamped one. Yes, I've remembered to finish it. Yay! Give the girl a lollipop. So, you can see that is now... I hope it's dry enough. <laughs> it's going to be smudgy wudgy. Oh, I've said fuzzy wuzzy, so now everything's got to rhyme. And it's fudgy wudgy. Right, I'm going to turn that. It got really hot. I'm just going to turn it off. I'm going to let it cool down, but I just haven't got time to let it cool down. I'm going to put it through, see what occurs. That's dried for how long it's took me to film the video. About half an hour that's been drying for. So we'll see what occurs. I could have paused video until that laminate cooled down. I didn't think of that. What's that saying? If brains were dynamite, I wouldn't have enough to blow the top of my head off sometimes. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's coming out lovely. I don't know what it is about that white ink and why it's so much better, but it is. That is beautiful. Look at that. Let me put it in front of that green foam because it showed up really well in front of green foam. Where on earth is the green foam? I had a piece of green foam and now I don't have a piece of green foam. Let's try it in front of the purple paper. Can't see it in front of purple paper. Oh, woman. Green foam, green foam. How can you lose a piece of bright green foam when you've not been anywhere or done anything? I've no idea, but I can. Let's try it on some black. Waha! Oh, look at that. Yeah, that looks gorgeous. And if you're not happy with that, how wrinkled it is, wang it through again. I'm quite happy with that. I'm going to fold that over. Oh, I've got it not too bad for middle as well either. Hunter. I'm quite happy with that one. Whee. So do you know what? I am going to send it through again just to make that crease a little bit more defined. Whee. There we go. I hope it doesn't smudge me ink sending it through a second time. Whee. It takes a long time since I've done some of these bits. I used to love making the acetate cards. There's lots of other things you can do with your laminator. If you want a video with some more laminator tips, let me know. I might do one. Right, so look at that. Voila. I did have people ask. I keep wanting to press them and they're not buttons. I did have people ask if you could use laminator sheets in place of acetate. Yes, you can. Not a problem, as you can see. So we've made that. We've made our pouches, many of, and we've done our laminating. So like I said, that's just a few of my favourite things to do with my laminator. There's many more. Check out everyone else who's been involved in collaboration. It's been going on all month. I think we had Corey Damon yesterday, and I don't know who's tomorrow. There's one more lady tomorrow, and then there'll be a final video by Rachel. So thank you very much for watching. All the links will be in the description to find everyone else's videos. And yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye.